Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're live in San Francisco, California for the end of day two of VMworld 2014. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, my co-host Dave Vellante for the wrap up of day two. Dave, uh, five years now running. Uh, VMworld's like a marathon. It really truly tests the limit of our fatigue and our awareness and our, our ability to put together the analysis. So let's try to wrap things up. Um, we had Carl Escherbach on, slew of customers, great guest Steve Harrod came on. We started out with the VC panel with Jerry Chen, Pete Sonsini, uh, the VCs now tier one investing, just ran into a bunch of folks here at Norwest, Lightspeed, Highland Capital's here. It is a target rich environment to find the next Docker, to find that next tin tree, that next Nutanix. And the theme to me here, Dave, is, is fundamentally under the hood, day two, is about the technology. So the keynotes today were about technology innovation. Yesterday was the grand vision, today was under the hood. And this is where the opportunity is. And, and the entrepreneurs are here scouring. It's not, it's not Monday, no partner meetings. They're out doing deals. And there is some significant change happening and it's great opportunities for entrepreneurs, but more importantly, the companies who have funding, the, the people who are part of the transformation, and finally, the incumbents, Dave, the guys who are, who are protecting their market share, they're either going to be on a defensive or an offensive position. We heard Pat Gelsinger yesterday, Carl Escherbach today, uh, reiterated, VMware is on the offensive, the VCs are doing deals. What's your take? Give me your analysis. Well, I think um, VMware realized many, many years ago that the hypervisor was going to get commoditized and they started making moves to add value up the stack. And that's what they're doing. They're operating, acting like a software company, even though, you know, when Pat Gelsinger took over, Floyer wrote a piece on Wikibon basically saying there's going to be a lot tighter integration between the hardware and the software. Uh, because Pat is a guy who understands that level of integration. And that's exactly what's happening. You saw that with the announcement of Evo Rails, even though they're you know, distributing that through partners. Interestingly, the, those partners are, 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 are not including uh, Cisco and HP, at least at this time. Um, and so, I think you're seeing just you know, VMware behaving just as you would predictably expect them to, grab more pieces of the stack, maybe elbow out you know, some folks out of the ecosystem, that's fine, that's the way these big platform plays work. So, you know, I think we're seeing the evolution. Now the question is, okay, how big is it? How big can it be? I think it can be very large. I, I think that, as we talked about, uh, with, you talked with Jerry Chen and, and Pete Sonsini, and we also discussed with Steve Harrod, there are a lot of pockets of opportunity. I, I don't know if there's any pocket as large as VMware itself. I think, I think right now I don't see that, that pocket. I see many little pockets with great opportunities. I mean, multi-billion dollar opportunities, guys like, Nutanix, for example. Um, so, I think, John, that you know, we're starting to see that coalesce just as we had expected and predicted that it would. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, yesterday I commented in the wrap up that it was obvious we're back to this mainframe concept. Mainframe is the cloud, the cloud is decentralized, open source is, is the ethos, and I mentioned about the developers are coming back in house. I got a lot of tweets on that yesterday. Today, I think it, it's, it's a couple things. I mentioned the VC opportunity, certainly entrepreneurially, there's a lot of activity, uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurship inside these existing companies to innovate. We heard VMware, uh, I mean, EMC say they had Docker early on. We're playing with, obviously, that probably influenced the decision with the Federation to go with Docker. But I think Steve Harrod kind of highlighted to me uh, in my chat, our chat with Steve here today, about his investment thesis, which I think is right on. Steve Harrod, former CTO of VMware, basically pointed out the following. It's a multi-cloud world, not just one cloud, multi-cloud. Infrastructure for mobile, big data, internet of things, and perimeterless IT, uh, perimeterless IT meaning the security has to be outside, uh, I mean inside the application with some sort of wrapper or container, not as a perimeter. So, if you wrap all these things out, this speaks to the applications are driving the innovation at the infrastructure level. And I think today, clearly we heard that. Google came on theCUBE with the news around Google's involvement. Again, that points to some of the innovations happening at the cloud level. Amazon, and Amazon certainly is the threat. We heard that yesterday, now Google's a player. But I think 
what Steve pointed out in my question to him, Dave, I asked a very pointed question about Docker, about stateless applications and state, stateful applications, and what you see with VMware and Docker is that hedge, that bridge between the reliability of applications across both those environments. I think that's VMware's play, clearly enterprise-based cloud, and that's, that's, they're all in on that. So again, I think VMware's staying the course, hybrid cloud, end user computing, and then software-defined data center all underneath. Yeah, I think that you know, the big strategic move news at this show was sort of, I would, call, I would say, you know, co-opting a strategy around uh, uh, both OpenStack, number one, and number two around, around Docker. I think that third piece is not as clear, and that's the public cloud. Although, you know, it appears that you know, Google is sort of throwing holy water on VMware's approach of hybrid cloud. We heard Google, uh, Craig from Google said, well long term we believe that you know, the vast majority of workloads are going to be in the public cloud. I think you know, long term, depend, depending on how to define that, they're probably right. Uh, but in the interim, Google's taking a very pragmatic approach. That I think is a, a big win for VMware because let's face it, Amazon has a completely different mindset here. It's like you know, our way or the highway. So I think that's an interesting setup, sets up an interesting battle. The other huge battle you're seeing there's a, a vicious battle for, back, for taking cost out of back-end infrastructure, John. I mean, you're seeing you know, EMC, HP, you know, Dell, uh, uh, you know, really focused on doing that. IBM does not have a huge presence at the show, by the way, I mean, they're here, but you know, not as, uh, as visible. Um, certainly not you know, in our little world here in theCUBE. And then you've got guys like Nutanix coming in, really you know, trying to drive costs down, so there's a, amazing battle going on. Then you have vSAN, you see Evo Rail, so VMware's doing what software companies do. They're commoditizing the hardware. They say they're not, they are. Of course they are, because- well, so The software message is clear, and we haven't seen the meat on the bone yet. We're going to get to that tomorrow, I hope. But ultimately, Dave, this is where it's at. They're thinking big, and what I love about this year's show is, uh, I love big thinkers, and I think that's one of the things I, I I miss about some of the entrepreneurial culture is that people don't think big enough, right? So one of the things you're seeing about this transformation in IT and cloud is big ideas and big thinking is happening. People are moving fast around these big ideas. Certainly the game changing benefits of that is going to be in, in the monetary side of the financial side, the investment opportunity, the financial opportunity to make a profit if you're a VC. If you're an entrepreneur, you build a big company. And I think, you know, I was talking to the investor of Nutanix, he did the seed investment. They're, over, they're worth over $2 billion. Tintree's on the queue. Tintree, Nutanix, these are the companies that are thinking differently and they are eating some of the lunch of the big guys, EMC and NetApp, have to be worried and they are, this is just a complete fun environment. I mean, it can be stressful in terms of the show, in terms of activity, but it's absolutely really exciting to see all the action. Well, the epicenter of the enterprise IT economy is VMware, and that's why VMware has a $40 billion valuation. And so, well, I want to ask you. I want. I want to ask you a question, okay? Because we in 2010, when we started the Cube, it's our 50 year um, doing the Cube here at VMworld. You and I said when we first did our first Cube at EMC World, storage at the center of all the innovation. Okay, it's it's the, it's the centerpiece. It still hasn't changed. We had one quote on the Cube today that said, "This is a storage show." <laughs> Why, in your opinion, Dave, is storage such a central piece of the conversation? It's well, I really, I mean, it's, it's cloud. Is, is, it, is, is, it, is that the, the battleground? Well, I do, I, well, I think it's one of the battlegrounds. I mean, certain storage and networking is becoming increasingly a battleground, and, and, and I, I still feel like, while it's critically important, mobile and end-user compu computing is, I don't want to say peripheral, but it's, <laughs> it's out there. Okay, and there is another battle going on between you know, Citrix and Microsoft and, and VMware, but storage is at the heart of it because storage is so hard, it's always been so problematic, and it's such a huge opportunity. You know, big hard problems, and I do think, you know, again, I, I would give props to networking as, a, as a, a big opportunity, it's just, there's a big whale there in Cisco, and it's unclear how VMware and Cisco are going to evolve that part of the software-defined ecosystem, who's going to win that battle, Cisco is, you know, not going to back down, but you know, it's very interesting to see what, what uh, VMware is doing. Pat Gelsinger said, we love Cisco gear. That's a quote that he said in his keynote. So he's <laughs> deep positioning Cisco in his keynote as a hardware company. We're going to do the software piece. So, I, I, again, I wouldn't, I, I, storage is a you know, critical piece, especially with the flash disruption, but networking is there as well. 
More action tomorrow. Stay with theCUBE, okay? We're here wall-to-wall -wall coverage. As usual, 50 year at VMworld, this is theCUBE, our flagship. We go out and start to see all the noise. We had Bill Fathers coming on tomorrow. We got the CTO of VMware, of uh, Chris Wolf. Uh, we have uh, Citrix coming on, Ted Gile. We're going to hear from Eric Nielsen, who runs social media for VMware, and how they're going to go to the digital 3.0 convergence, the next generation social. Frank Artali with Ignition Partners will be on tomorrow, another VC. D-Raj coming on, I think. Yeah, Tom Cook, Permabit. D-Raj, uh, well, Ben Golub's coming on from Docker. We're going to hear Docker from the CEO of Docker. The whirlwind that is Docker. We want to get the inside baseball from him, and obviously D-Raj Pandey's coming on. Uh, we're going to have the CEO of Basha. We have really great guests. We have Oracle coming on tomorrow, Capgemini, um, and just a ton of great guests. And I'm going to be Martin Casado uh, will be on as well. Sanjay Poonan, we're going to hear about Airwatch and all the momentum. Amazing talent coming on, Dave. How about Docker, John? I mean, actually, I give props to SiliconANGLE. SiliconANGLE covered that right on top of it. Jerry Chen's first investment and now they're here in front of 25,000 people. They are the talk of the show. Dave, Up we, there with Google and VMware, <laughs> it's amazing. You know, it's a private victory for me. I always talk to Mark Hopkins about this, and uh, you know, now Jeff Frick is, is in building out the Cube Silicon Valley. We break markets, right? We look for the next big thing. We don't just say it, we do it, and we don't really do, do enough credit. Thanks for the props, pat ourselves on the back a little bit here and there, but for the most part, we really break news. I mean, we, we break markets, not news, and ultimately, it's awesome, right? So we pride ourselves on that, and we want to get better. Uh, obviously, the Cube, Wikibon, Silicon Angle, continue to do our thing. Uh, we've had over 41 interviews so far in the past two days, and props to the team. Great workflow here, and we're in Moscone's lobby right now. It's great action coming on here inside the Cube. VMworld is pumping on all cylinders. Uh, we're getting text, uh, text people texting in live right now. Um, we got a lot of segments recorded. We're going to go to the parties, and we get the metadata, Dave. We're going to go out and get the metadata, you know, and play a little beer pong maybe later on, like, like last night. A lot of fun, a lot of action. VMworld, always a great show. Conversations in the hallway, certainly just as good as the conversations here on theCUBE, and it's exciting. So stay with us. We're live here in San Francisco, California for VMworld 2014, and stay tuned for tomorrow, day three, here inside theCUBE in San Francisco for VMworld. That's a good night, we'll see you tomorrow.